Hello everyone, myself Dr. Jyoti Mandala. Welcome you all to the video lecture series on C programming. We are in our lecture number 4. Up to our last lecture, we learned different aspects like what actually a computer is and what are all the different ways we have to program a computer. And, and in the last lecture, we le started learning about problem solving techniques where there we have highlighted some steps to be followed to give a solution to a problem and in that we have concluded uh, like we have stopped with an algorithm step and today's lecture will continue will resume our learning process of problem solving techniques uh, and we have already highlighted uh, we are in the design phase where as part of design phase uh, we learned about uh, we need to write on the algorithm and then we need to continue with the flowchart so today we'll see in detail about this flowchart and we need to learn about the other steps to be followed while uh, uh, designing any solution to a problem so we know algorithm is nothing but a step-by-step -step process uh, whereas coming to a flowchart a flowchart is nothing but a diagrammatic representation or it is a tool that commonly used by uh, commonly used which uses some symbols to design a solution to a problem so whatever solution you are giving that solution will be represented in as step by step in case of algorithm in case of flowchart it will be represented by using different symbols so normally this flowchart is considered as a blueprint design for any solution to a specific problem so we can define a flow chart as a diagrammatic representation or a graphic representation and this diagrammatic or graphic representation uh, shows the sequence of steps to be followed to solve to get the solution to your problem right so as i told you we need to you we the flow chart is nothing but a diagrammatic representation so there should be some standard symbols uh, uh, to be used to draw the flow chart and here i am showing some standard symbols to be used but here it is not confined to this one here I might have shown you uh, six symbols only but we have other symbols also but these are all the basic symbols which are called as standard symbols that are used to draw your flowchart. So if you see here oval shape is given and this oval shape is used to represent your starting and ending of your flowchart and then we have a parallelogram and this parallelogram is used for taking the input and producing the output that means displaying the output to the user and this symbol is used to do that task and whenever you are performing any operations whatever logic you are writing to do that to do to give solution to your problem that should be written in the rectangle so this is called as a processing right everything the data manipulation and what are all the operations you are going to do that should be represented in the rectangle and then we have a diamond symbol and this diamond symbol is used for your decision making decision making is nothing but you will be writing your condition and uh, after evaluating this statement here you may be having either true value or a false value so you may be representing two parts out of this one one may be two true path and the other may be the false path got it all of you and whatever flow you are showing that f these symbols these symbols should be connected by using these arrow marks and we have arrow marks upward direction downward direction left and right normally this symbol may not be used but according to your requirement you can use this one but uh, normally left symbol uh, left arrow mark right arrow mark and the uh, bottom uh, arrow mark can be used now we have one more symbol which is called as a small circle and which is called as a connector symbol and the use of this connector is to connect the flow charts i'll show you how that can be done also right so it is i am repeating once again it is not limited to these uh, symbols only we have some other symbols also like for uh, for showing a database we have a, another symbol to get a print of your page then uh, another symbol will be used that those are not the standard symbols for your purpose these are the standard symbols and you can use these symbols to write on the flow chart right all of you so now let us see while writing any flowchart uh, you need to remember some points uh, uh, while drawing your flowchart or while developing a flowchart what are the points the first point is always a flowchart should start with a start and stop symbol and that start and stop symbol is your ellipse symbol which i have shown you in the last slide and each flowchart should have only one start and one stop symbol you should, your flowchart should not have multiple start and start symbols only one start and one stop symbol 
right and uh, i told you we have a small circle symbol which is used for connector so if you have a flow chart if you in the same place if you are writing one flow chart here and if you want to continue the flow chart from here then you can have a small circle here and that connector should be represented with a number and um, and if you have a flow chart which are connected in two different pages then you need to reference that one with an alphabet that means on page connectors are referred using numbers and off page connectors are referred using alphabets right generally the flow of process is from top to bottom and from left to right that's why i told you in the last slide normally from bottom to top the connector may not be used but according to your some cases it will be used but generally the flow of uh, the flow of your flow chart will be uh, the flow of your process will be from top to bottom or, fr or from left to right and remember one thing whatever arrows we have represented they, those four arrows should not cross each other so you should be more careful while drawing your flow chart why because it should be very clear for the developer to get a code to write a programming code by using this flow chart okay so these points you need to keep in your mind while developing a flow chart now next what we'll do is we'll see one example to draw a flow chart to find the average of marks obtained to find the average of marks obtained by a student in three subjects so the the basic requirements is we have already done uh, writing an algorithm for the same problem uh, the same requirements are considered here input is marks for three students tasks to be performed is calculating the average and output expected is average of these three marks right now let us start drawing the flow chart for this one uh, we need to use those symbols the standard symbols which i have shown you to draw the flow chart always we need to start with the start and stop symbol and here our first task is to take the input of three marks so input should be represented with the parallelogram so that's why i have represented with the parallelogram and three marks three values are stored in three marks right and then we need to find out the average which is nothing but we are doing some process and that should be represented in a rectangle and here we are calculating the average and here we are by using that formula and once the average is calculated we want to display that output so that's why again we need to use the parallelogram symbol where we are displaying this average now all these symbols all these symbols should be connected through the connectors so here i have used this arrow mark because the flow is from top to bottom so this is the final flow chart to find the average of marks obtained by a student in three subjects similarly i'll show you one more example where you can check the grade of a student where mm, you need to ask the user some marks and after performing some operation if the average if the value is less than 50 you need to represent that one uh, that student as fail or else you need to print uh, that student as a pass that means if the marks are greater than 50 okay so here we need to use a decision symbol see here we need to ask the user to enter the marks and we have calculated the average of those marks and if the average of those marks is less than 50 here i have used the decision symbol because i need to make a decision whether he's failed or passed depending upon this grade so is grade less than 50 years means he need to we need to print print fail so here you need to use a parallelogram symbol or you need to you can use this print symbol also right so this is one more symbol you can make a note of that one now if the grade is less than uh, less than 50 no in that means he is passed so one of these two will be executed and finally we need to stop with the process here you need, you need to observe here the flow will be in that from the top to bottom so we have used the connectors like this got it all of you so this is how we can draw the flow chart for any problem given to you and this flow chart is called as a diagrammatic representation of your solution to your problem so we have done learning the flow chart flow chart so which is one of the step in the designing and we are in a process of learning the problem solving techniques where we learned about problem definition problem analysis and designing part also now let us see the rest of the three ways now the next one is coding what do you mean by coding is once your algorithm and flow chart is with you now you can start writing the code code is nothing but developing the set of instruction in a particular programming language like directly in the machine language or, di or in the assembly language or in a high level language got it all of you but we are doing the things in high level language and the high level language we are using is our c programming language so once your algorithm and flow chart is ready with you you start writing instructions in a particular language to solve the solution to a problem and in future from the next lecture onwards we are going to learn about c programming language how to write the instructions to give the solution uh, then the solution whichever given in the form of a flowchart or an algorithm 
Alright, all of you. Now, once the code has been written in a particular language, we need to go to the next step, which is called as a testing step, where you need to check the uh, completeness, correctness, and the uh, reliability of your program. So, whether your program, whatever you have written, is correct or not, you need to check that one in this phase, where you need to follow some testing processes like unit testing, program testing, and validation testing. Unit testing is nothing but a big project can be divided into multiple modules and in individual module is considered as a unit and each unit should be individually tested whether it is performing its particular task or not now once unit testing is done all the all the units can be combined to form one one program and that can be and once it is combined you need to test once again which is called as a integration testing or it can be also called as a program testing now once it is done then you need to go to the third step of validation testing where different different test cases you need to check whether uh, for each test case you are getting the correct output or not so once your code has been developed you need to come with your you need to go to the next step of testing your program program why because here only you can judge whether your program whatever developed by you is correct or not right so while testing you may be encountering some syntactical errors or logical errors you need to rectify all those errors and you need to make your program completely error free now once testing phase is done now you the last step of your problem solving technique is maintenance maintenance is nothing but once all the problems is the, uh, is done all the problems are, all the errors are rectified and your program is ready uh, with uh, error free program is ready and you have given that one to your end user there your pro, your task may not be ended you have to take care of the maintenance maintenance is nothing but in future periodically you need to review your programs based on the modifications given by the user requirements in future the user may change his requirements then your program should be compatible enough to accept those modifications and you need to uh, incorporate those modifications in your code and you need to periodically re review your programs whether those requirements are met by your program or not so these are all the different problem solving techniques we need to follow starting from your problem definition to problem analysis and then you need to design your code and then you need to for in case of designing you need to write down the algorithm and flowchart and after designing you need to write down the code of for using a particular programming language and once code is developed you need to write down the you need to test whether your program is correct or not and once your program is error free you can uh, deliver that one to the end user but after delivering also you need to periodically review a program which is coming under the maintenance step so this is completely about your problem solving te techniques got it all of you i hope you all are clear with this problem solving techniques so in the from the next lecture onwards we'll start learning uh, the c programming language in detail let us all meet in our next lecture thank you all of you